No, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, there was, there's some picks that I, I have some questions about. Um, and there's some picks that, that, yeah, I was like, dude, that that's a stud. Like the NFL got themselves a stud right there. So mm -hmm. yeah. Do, do we want to just first, before we get into any of that, do we want to talk about Will Levis? Is that, Hey, is that, is that, maybe that's not classy of us. Like maybe that's not classy. Cause like me and you were against this from the beginning or do we just go ahead and just kind of dig in, you know? Well, I was just going to ask, like, is it possible that NFL teams are actually smarter than the, all the guys that do the mocks like year round? <laughs> yeah, well, fair. Because they didn't take Will Evans <laughs> in the first round. I know. I, I mean, know. it's honestly looking at the NFL. Yeah, there were some bad picks, but the first three picks, especially. Yeah. Yeah. Nailed. Nailed. Yeah. They didn't three. take yeah. Will Evans in the first round. Uh, uh, yeah, you can point at a few flaws, but like there were there were there was talk late about him going first overall. I mean, well, okay, there there was some there was some message board stuff going around like the week of the draft, just yeah. last week, talking about yeah. him going first or at least in the top three, and it didn't happen. So I just want to take tip my cap a little bit. We've been saying for a year, ever since those mock drafts came out a year ago, of him going. Yeah first overall or in the first round by everybody we were saying yeah. this is insane and yeah. nfl teams clearly agreed with us over the mock draft experts i mean you do know that i, I believe it was the last kind of two three days leading up to the draft that will levis's odds like the vegas drafting odds spiked drastically yeah like like exactly. he was he, he was more of a favorite to go at two to houston mm -hmm. than cj stroud was and that was like like on wednesday like the day before the draft. Yep. And then it, and then it yeah, it, it dipped back down again. I mean, we agree. Like, yeah, like, I mean, it's the same stuff that we've been saying for a year now at this point. And I'm just, yeah, thankful. I'm thankful that, that at least they seem to see it the same way that we did is that he's not that good. Like, yeah. And by the way, he has a fantastic arm. Like, I, yeah. I don't want to like there's they were the way they treated him. I wasn't a big fan of like, why do they have to keep showing his, you know, picture? I, I don't know if you watched Thursday, but that's I mean, that's most of what they showed was Will Levis getting mad after every pick that wasn't him, you know, yeah. which was everybody. So like I wasn't a huge fan of that. I just yeah, he, he's a he's a decent second round pick. Like, I think the yeah. Titans have value. Like, I sure. think the Titans, they got him in the second round and that's a value pick for them. I, I didn't hate the pick. Um, but yeah, it, it was absurd to have him in the top five. We, I think we all kind of, we all felt that way. And, and thank goodness, like, thank goodness, cooler heads prevailed. Isn't it fair to say that if you're rooting for him to succeed, this is the best possible outcome, like him not being overdrafted, him going in the second yeah. round to a team that doesn't need him to start right away, even though he might be quote unquote ready because he understands NFL offenses or whatever. Like, but there's not going to be just as nearly as much pressure on him to come in and be the savior of a franchise as there would have been if he'd have been drafted by the Panthers or the Texans or the Colts in the top four. Like there's not going to be nearly as much pressure on him this way. Well, yes. I mean, it's an argument that you can make and, and there, there won't be as much pressure and he won't have to like start, he, I think pretty much when you're taking a quarterback in the first round, he's going to have to start and he's pretty much going to have to start that year. Mm -hmm. Like there's a few exceptions, but he, at some point, like he will get major starting time within the next year, year and a half. So whatever you say about Will Levis, like the opposite would be true for Richardson at four. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I would kind of view those two as kind of similar Richardson and Levis and is it good or or would you rather your guy just go out and get a bunch of snaps at a young age and just like get thrown into the fire and see if he's, you know, can go like, I, I don't know. Like I, it, both ways work depending on the quarterback, like Rogers, Aaron Rodgers, it worked great for him just to sit there for four years. Right. And, mm -hmm. and then other guys, like they kind of, they do better just kind of getting thrown in day one. So I, I don't know, maybe it depends on the quarterback, I guess. I guess the, where I would maybe differ on that viewpoint a little bit is, with Will Levis, the guy's 23 years old. He started two yeah. full years. We've seen him play. Anthony Richardson is the youngest quarterback, I think they said, drafted in the NFL in like 73 years or something ridiculous. So, okay. you know, he's got 13 starts under his belt. I think for him, you he can get away with a bad rookie year 
more than Will Levis could have just because he's so young. Like if, if Will Levis had gotten drafted by say the Colts at four, he would have been expected to come in. I guess you could have a little bit of patience with, with that guy, but he's 23. Like it's gotta happen where with Anthony Richardson, if it takes two years of developing, it's not that big of a deal because even if, even if the reality is it's not that much of a difference, the perception is, ah, he's still young. It's fine. You know what I mean? Like the perception matters yeah. so much when it comes to like those expectations. I, th- I mean, I, I agree with you. I think that's how it used to be. I, I do mm-hmm. think that with quarterbacks anymore, like I think that if Richardson flails drastically year one and it doesn't work out, right. Say it like mm-hmm. it's just not working. The Colts will probably have a very high draft pick next year. And say they find themselves in the same spot. Like, I think they probably go quarterback again. Like, I think it's that, like, it's so quarterback dependent that there's not a long lead time for guys. You, Mac Jones was the first rounder and you're already hearing rumblings. Like the, the Patriots will be looking for a new one. Like we're going to try to get it. I mean, Mac Jones took him to the playoffs. So I, yes, like I, I, I agree with you maybe in part, I do think certain franchises and the Colts aren't really like this. The Colts usually get a guy and stick with the guy. Like once they have him. like, you think of like Peyton and, Andrew Luck, I guess. Like, they just kind of draft a guy, and that's it for – Other than the last time. five years. Well, okay, I wasn't <laughs> going to go into the veteran quarterback thing. I was talking about guys they were drafting. But, yes, I yeah. mean, it's been a disaster recently. But, well, okay, I'll just let's just go ahead and get into Richardson a little bit. How do you feel about it? You're a Colts fan. Mm-hmm. I Okay, I've watched a ton of Richardson play, right? I've seen him in person, watched a bunch. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's very good. What do you think? I also don't think he's very good right now. I, I was relieved – I knew they were going to have to take a quarterback. So it was going to be Richardson or Levis because the top two guys were off the board. And I would have liked to have one of the top two guys because the floor, in my opinion, is just so much higher. However, if it's going to be Richardson or Levis, I was very happy they went with Richardson because he is three years younger. Because, yeah, the floor is so ridiculously low. Like, he might never start a game in the NFL – but right. the ceiling is so much higher than Will Levis's ceiling. Like, the he's got the highest ceiling in the draft. I mean, higher than Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. Like, he has an oh. he has a Patrick Holmes like ceiling, Patrick Mahomes like ceiling. Now, I don't think he gets there. Like, I don't think he actually reaches that ceiling. And you could argue that it's more likely he he hits his floor than his ceiling, and his floor is so low, it's just ridiculous. But I didn't I didn't mind that if you're going to take one of the guys that's not that doesn't have a great chance of panning out, take the guy that's 20 and has just a stupid skill set. Take that guy and roll the dice on that guy. As opposed to the guy who's 23 and has started for several years and we've seen definitively after 2 years of starting followed by or which was following 2 years of not being beating out Sean Clifford, like he's not that good. Whereas yeah. Anthony Richardson, you can still convince yourself there's still a lot of room for him to grow. I don't know if you can get there with Will Levis. So I was happy just because they had to take a quarterback. And yeah, like Jalen Carter or whatever. Like there's 10 other picks that they could have. There's 30 other picks they could have made that would have been safer. But they had to take a quarterback. And so I was happy they chose him over Will Levis. Why, why not just either trade back? Or, yeah, take the best available there, you know, take Jalen Carter or take an offensive tackle that you like and build and knowing that there's good quarterbacks coming again next year. Like, just full-on embrace the tanking. Like, I I don't know. Like, Richardson, like, the Colts aren't aren't going to the playoffs next year. Like, like they're they're a a ways away from it, especially with the quarterback, like, turmoil. Like, we don't think Richardson's going to be a game-breaker day one, right? He's going to have some growing up to do. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, it still feels like you're a couple couple of years away, and and maybe that is good. You give Richardson some time. There's no doubt that he has skills. Like, you can watch him throw the ball. It looks fantastic. It looks like like it's almost like Joe Milton. Like when he throws the ball, like it's great. But he's like way more athletic. Like he's yeah, he's just silly athletic. I yeah, I don't know. I get. We'll have to see. I I didn't really agree with it. I've watched him too much. Like it is. I will say this. It is the riskiest top five pick in my lifetime. Sure. Like. It is, it is super risky. And I agree that like, I mean, we're shoving all our chips in the middle here. (laughs) Like that's kind of what the Colts did. And, and yeah, it could be like Patrick Mahomes in a perfect world. Um, 
and there's a lot of other worlds where it's not. So yeah, yeah sure. I, don't know. No, I agree. That's that's where I left it at. I, I think that you and I might both think that it would have been great if it's in that situation, like trade down, trade for a future pick or something, go for Caleb Williams or Drake May next year. That sounds great. The problem is their roster is a little bit too good to ensure themselves that they have a top two pick next year, unless really? they like trade DeForest Buckner and Jonathan Taylor and like, like all of their good veterans, they would have to literally get rid of some of their best players because they're a little too good. I think to ensure themselves of a top two pick like Gardner Minshew, I think this year yeah. can get them to five or six wins. Right. And then you're drafting seventh next year. And again, the top two quarterbacks are off the board. And like at some point, you either got to trade up and they they failed to do that this year, which is what the Panthers did, or roll the dice on a guy. And I was glad that they rolled the dice on a guy who has a lot of upside as opposed to, well, let's take the guy who, you know, everything turns out right. He might be Carson Wentz. <laughs> like, right. And that's right. what it feels like. Will Levis, he's either Jake Locker or Carson Wentz. And like, do you oh, really yeah. want? Do you really want one of those? Like, with your number with, with with your first round pick? No. Like, you want the guy who has a chance to become a top five quarterback in the NFL. Is it going to happen? Probably not. But you at least took the guy, the one guy left on the board who who has a chance to do that. Sure. If if I was the Colts and it, and it does suck to be four and and knowing that like the Panthers by the way played this very well they went ahead and got the number one pick early from the Bears and we're yep. just like yeah like, like we're gonna get the guy that we like you know what I mean yep. and and I yeah I have a lot of yeah respect to them but the I, I don't know is it, what is it a crazy strategy say you take I don't, I don't know pick a let's let's go with. Yeah, let's say you take Paris Johnson at four, the tackle from Ohio State, and you wait until rounds four and five, and you go take Jay Kaner and Stetson Bennett. And then you have two, and, and just because one might, one might pop. They they may not, but one might. And yeah, I don't know. That's, I would be, that's an, I, I think that's an interesting strategy that no one really does. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying, but I think if Jay Kaner or Stetson Bennett works out, like exceeds expectations, that means they're probably the, number 15 to 20 quarterback in the NFL. Okay. And I'm just saying this as a spoiled Colts fan. We don't want the number 15 quarterback in the NFL. Like we, I grew up with Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck. You want the guy who's yeah. a top five quarterback. Yeah. Okay. Do we, any other teams? Like, I know we spent a lot of time on the Colts. There was a, I'm just going to go ahead with a couple of teams that I thought did really well. Mm -hmm. um, I was really impressed with the Texans. That was bold. Yeah. Go jumping back up after taking CJ at two, which by the way, they held their cards super close to the vest. I think they did a really good job there. Mm -hmm. Like they, I think they intentionally kind of threw out like a smoke screen almost mm -hmm. like the Levis stuff that they were saying actively, like, we're not, we, we may not take a quarterback. We might go somewhere else. They kept everyone in the dark and then they went, yeah, pick CJ who was the guy all along. Like that was the guy that we thought they had to pick like Bryce Young and CJ Stroud were by far the best two quarterbacks yeah. in, in the draft. And then you go get the best edge available. Mm -hmm. Will Anderson, who's like, a, he's, I think he's going to be really good at three. I was really impressed with, with that. Like, and mm -hmm. yeah, who, the, the rest of their draft, it's, it's hard to know, like projecting down line, but you can absolutely say like that. That's what they filled two really big needs quarterback and edge rusher are huge. Like that's huge stuff that you have to have. So no, I, I liked what they did. I think, yeah, I, I like their draft. Like I think mm -hmm. Houston set themselves up well. Yeah. I think that you could argue that they gave up, you know, too much for that pick, but if you end up with a top five edge rusher in the NFL and who knows, maybe a top 10 quarterback, like that was worth it. Like it was totally yeah. worth it. If, if that's what yeah. it ends up being. And if you're the Texans, like you need some stars, man, like you, you do. And yeah, you know, Will Anderson, th those picks might have turned into three other, like, solid players, but wouldn't you rather have the guy who is just a freak and has a chance to be, a like, an all-pro type of guy? I, th I, th I thought they did a really good job with that, personally. I, I like what they do. Valuable positions, too. I like. Yeah. I, I, think, I think that's something that sometimes these teams get a little bit wrong, is they'll go draft someone that you can get for, like, value. And yeah, mm -hmm. third, fourth, fifth round, like running backs are like that. 
Like I, yeah, quarterbacks, edge rushers. I'm a big fan of going getting your guys early because there's a fairly high correlation of like, especially with edges and quarterbacks, like the guys that are all pros are usually drafted in the top couple of picks. You know what I mean? Like they're often mm-hmm. high draft picks. So yeah, like you need to be up there taking your shots at, at, and if those two guys land like the draft is success, like who cares what they did, you know, for the rest of the draft, if the, yeah. if, if CJ and Will Anderson hit for Houston, that was fantastic. Speaking of positional value, <laughs> what did you think of the Detroit Lions? They took Jameer okay. Gibbs at number 12. Yeah. They took Jack Campbell, yeah. linebacker at number 18. And then they, they took Sam Laporta, a tight end at number 34. One thing I had Michael <laughs> Mayer, by the way. What yeah. did you think of that? Okay. They, <laughs> they, clear, they clearly liked their guys. I, I didn't mind Jack Campbell just a ton. Like, if he's – if. Yeah, that, I mean it's an inside linebacker, and like he's athletic. By the way, Campbell had a great forty time, kind of like a surprising forty time. He's one of those guys that had a ton of results, and then he showed up the combine, tested well, and we're like, oh, I guess that makes sense. Like that checks out. I guess that's why he was so good. Okay, I think they could have had him with their next pick. <laughs> I know. Just stay with me for a second. Jameer Gibbs in the first round at twelve you could have Deuce Vaughn in the sixth round. Yeah. I, they're the same guy. Like, <laughs> I, I don't I don't understand that one. Like, that's one that I don't really get. And a running back, by the way, have are we not paying attention? Zeke is out in Dallas. Like, yeah. they, don't, they don't care. Leonard Fournette, who was the, the number four pick, I believe, in his draft, mm-hmm. pat, drafted ahead of Patrick Mahomes, he's out. He's long since been out, and he's been jumping teams ever since. And I'm not saying he's a bad back. Because he's actually a decent running back. Both of those guys are. But the shelf life is so short, dude. Like, yep. it's so short, and it, they're so replaceable. <laughs> like, Deuce Vaughn was a home run pick for Dallas. Like, mm-hmm. I and, and I know you like, like Deuce Vaughn as well. Like, we've been Absolutely. fans of him, him for a while. We think we love what he does. We think his game translates to Alvin Kamara pretty much. Like, we think he's that kind of guy. But, like, like, why are we drafting these other running backs so high when – the shelf, it's a short shelf life. It is. They don't last long. And you can get value later down line, second, third, fourth round. And that one didn't make sense to me. It didn't. And they reached for Jameer Gibbs. They could have waited a while on him. Yeah. You're a nominal Falcons fan. How'd you feel about Bijan Robinson, number eight? <laughs> okay. I mean, copy paste what I said just a minute ago. When the Falcons have so many holes, so many holes, and you're mm-hmm. going to go draft a guy. B. John Robinson is ready to win, win now. Like, he doesn't have like, – okay, so he's going to have, let's say, six, seven good years. Like, that sounds mean. That sounds bad. But I think it's quite true. Like, I think mm-hmm. that if you're going to feed a guy, like just a workhorse, it's not going to last very long. Like, not unless he's, like, special, like Derrick Henry or whatever. So – yeah, no, I like I don't love it. I don't the Falcons have so many. I think I'm an Eagles fan. I'm just I have switched my alliance <laughs> to the Eagles because the Eagles are doing everything that I wish the Falcons would be doing. Like, how do the Eagles get this all right? The Eagles are another team that I'm and I'm sure that you were impressed by them too. Mm-hmm. Finding value. The the Eagles might have had the best roster in all of football last year. And like they had two first round picks, they didn't reach. They went and took right. the best. They they had the luxury of sitting there and waiting. They didn't really need anybody, but they went and and had some steals. Like just mm-hmm. taking the best player available. Like, yeah, we'll have an extra defensive tackle because why not? And I yeah, I think you see the reaction that that some of the Eagles get um when when I think Micah Parsons uh for the Cowboys, he was he was like on a live stream when the Eagles drafted Jalen Carter and he's like like you have to be kidding. Like, how did they get him to like, it's not, can't have them all, but yeah, I, it's everything that I wish the Falcons would be doing. The the Eagles seem to have, they at least have a strategy and it's a plan. Like we're going to go get all of the best players from the best defense that we've seen in the last 15 years in college. And we're going to go, go get as many of them as possible. And you know what? It's like, how did the Falcons not get that? Like, why are we drafting running backs? It was very frustrating. I'm done talking. Yeah, you made a good point. Like, if you're drafting a running back in the first round, you better be, like, on the verge of contention, and that's what you need to contend. And the right. Falcons, like, Jalen Carter played college ball an hour away from Atlanta. Like, go draft yeah. that guy. He might be the best player in the draft when this is all done. And then the Bears, they traded traded down a spot. They could have had Jalen Carter as well. The Eagles take him. And then, you know, they take Nolan Smith at number 30. And to me, that feels right. Like, 
Yep. Like if he was actually going in the top ten, I would have I would have wanted a little more production out of that guy. But hey, just go take the physical freak at number thirty, and right. not to mention they got I mean they get Keely Ringo in the fourth round. Like how does Steel. that how does that happen? Like Philly, Steel. just take the best player available. <laughs> Sidney yeah. Brown, good defensive back at Illinois. That yeah, love what they did. Um, any other teams that stand out to you from what, what you saw? So there was one pick in the first round, and, and I think it kind of flew under the radar. It hasn't been talked about just a ton, but Minnesota getting Jordan Addison at 24. Mm-hmm. Minnesota Minnesota's a good team. Like, they have a good offense. You're going to get to pair him with some good receivers there. Um, mm-hmm. He's going to kind of sneak in under the radar, and he's going to have a lot of – he has a chance for a lot of production early on. Like Jordan yeah, Addison's yeah. a guy where you look at the end of next year, you're starting to look at like rookie of the year guys. It needs to be guys that are putting up a lot of numbers, right? Like that's kind of a numbers award. Jordan Addison could be that guy, like kind of a rookie of the year type um, in, in Minnesota because he's going to get a lot of looks, a lot of open looks, a lot of one-on-ones. And it's a good team. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not going to be like B. John Robinson just kind of running into a brick wall because the Falcons don't really do much else. They don't have a quarterback mm-hmm. that can throw the ball downfield, you know? So it's going to be, yeah, he's Jordan Addison. I, I like that pick a lot. Um, Jackson Smith and Jigba. I thought that was yeah. about right. 20 to Seattle. I don't know how you felt about that one. I, yeah. I like Seattle's a good football team. Like they went to the playoffs last year. Geno Smith played really well for them last year. He has a chance to have a really good rookie year too. I, I thought some of those guys, yeah, kind of down that, that mid to later end of this of the first round um that those were kind of names that popped up for me you know how when you're paying attention to the draft and you're watching your team and you're looking at the best available list and you're always like oh man that guy's there like i wonder if they'll take him yeah they never do <laughs> right. like they never take right. the guy you want it actually happened this year for me the colts took josh downs in the third round Oh. I absolutely love that pick so much. Um, yeah. I think he's going to be a stud. He's perfect. They already have the big outside receivers with Michael Pittman and Alec Pierce. Yeah. Josh Downs, that little slot guy who was just uber productive at North Carolina. I love that guy. Um, yeah, I just want to throw that one out there as maybe my favorite pick of the draft <laughs> as a Colts fan. Oh, I I love that one too. Like that's that's a like we were I think kind of both on the same page with Josh Downs. Mm-hmm. Like that. Yeah, home run, potential home run, like potential all pro type guy that like if it all works out for him. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, there was there was one more that there in the first round, kind of later on, Dalton Kincaid to the to the Bills. Hmm. Um, and and maybe that was a little early for a tight end. Like like we might have felt that there was a few other tight ends that were better than Kincaid. But like the, the offense that he gets to go to in Buffalo is <laughs> yeah. like it's going to be ridiculous. Like he's going to have a lot of open looks. So yeah, it, I think it, it does kind of highlight that it's the organization that the player's going to sometimes. Oh yeah, it, it is the it is the player for sure. It is the player that has to be good, no doubt. But I do think there's so, certain guys that aren't really given a shot due to just stepping into a bad situation. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they like they just they don't have a chance from from day one. But like Dalton Kincaid is going to have every chance in Buffalo. Sure. Any picks you just hated other than <laughs> some of the ones we already talked about? <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, most of the Falcons picks, but I don't, yeah, we don't, <laughs> we don't go into that. Um, I, not really. Like it's, it wasn't something that, yeah, you, these aren't guys that you're just hating on. I, I will say when you're drafting certain, like, like small, small teams and they'll have a player and sometimes they're good. Sometimes they are. It just feels funny. I, it doesn't, does that make me an an elitist? I guess like, do I want to just draft all sec players? Yeah, maybe like (laughs) sue me, I guess. But when you have someone from coming from like Sacramento state or whatever that I think the Patriots, of course it was the Patriots that took him um, from Sacramento state in the third round. It's like, ah, Ah, like, are we sure? Like, like, are we really sure that like he's never played against the, like, like anyone that's this big or talented before? Yeah, I don't know. Um, how about you? What what team did you have a team other than your like, other than the ones that we've mentioned that kind of popped off? Well, the the one the only team I just like hated everything about it was the Lions. Um, and we already talked about oh, really? them. Just the positional value. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean. You took Jameer Gibbs early 
for a running back. He took Jack Cam. It's it's one thing to take one of those guys if you had like they had three of the first thirty four picks in the draft, and they took right. three positions that you don't really want to use early picks on unless they're right. just ridiculously special. So I don't know. I don't know that any others really stood out to me in a huge way, positively or negatively. I I did like the Texans what they did just going ahead and getting C.J. Stroud and Will Anderson Jr. Um, yeah. The Eagles, of course, we've talked about. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I thought that a lot of the draft actually made sense to me other than a few things that we talked about. Like, Yeah, fair, fair. I, I liked I liked the Steelers draft. I thought the Steelers did a, mm-hmm. did a good, nice job of it. Uh, Broderick Jones there in the first round. Yeah. Um, very, very talented uh, kid that's still kind of maybe a little bit raw as a tackle, but yeah, kind of growing into it. Joey Porter Jr. Yeah. The corner from Penn Perfect. State. I, I like that pick. That was, mm-hmm. I thought that was great. I, yeah, liked his game a lot there at Penn State. Getting Darnell Washington in the third round. Yeah. In the third round was kind of a steal. Like that's a guy that was viewed as, you know, maybe a later end of the first round guy, mm-hmm. like for a bit and then kind of fell down. You're able to kind of get him there in the third. Um, or, or no, that was, was that the beginning? Maybe that might have been the beginning. It the was round. the third round. Yeah. I mean, which, Right there is a perfect example, though, of like if you're the Lions taking, you just took a running back and a linebacker, and now you have the 34 pick and you take Sam Laporta. Like, yeah. why not just wait around and take Darnell Washington and get somebody, right. get a position of need, like at the top of the draft, a position right. that matters more. I guess. Yeah, I, and I like like with Darnell, I think that it's it's kind of a there, there's no one like him. Like he's one of one, you know, like a like an offensive lineman that can kind of like run and catch. Yeah. So like, yeah, you can kind of establish an identity from that. Like, it's kind of like drafting a unicorn. Like there's, you don't just find guys like him that are that big um, all the time. So yeah, no, I, I thought that one was good. It's the usual suspects too, by the way, that have these, these good drafts. Like, I think, I think that's, that's something that like, it's the organizations that are run well (laughs) that Mm -hmm. you come away like, like, oh yeah, like. They, they made one pick and it was okay. They made another pick and it was okay. And then you get to the end and you tally all their guys and you're like, like, dang, that's like, that's a yeah. good draft. Like, like, yeah. Like we like Pittsburgh and Philly, like no kidding. Well, of course they're also course they're good. speaking of teams like that, that always seem to get the draft pretty, pretty right. I mean, Baltimore Ravens taking Zay flowers, like yeah. perfect. I love that pick yeah. for them. Um, I will say on the lions, I did like some of their later picks. They got Brian branch in the second round, like late in the second round Hendon yeah. hooker. Perfect spot for Hendon Hooker. Um, right. I heard somebody right. say he can be a good mentor for Jared Goff. <laughs> that was mean. That was mean. I, yeah, that was mean spirited. I, but I, but I, I like someone that, said that. that for someone said that for Stetson Bennett as well. He can go and mentor <laughs> Matthew Stafford out in, out in LA since he's so much older than him. I, I, yeah, a little mean spirited. No, the, the quarterbacks, there was a lot of value later on with the quarterbacks, like sure. quarterbacks late, third, fourth, fifth round value. Like we like Jake Hayner. I think he went to the Saints, um, New Orleans. Yeah, like I was a fan of uh, fan of him. Hendon Hooker. We mentioned Stetson Bennett when the fourth round. By the way, congratulations to Stetson. We've been maybe yep. a little harsh on him through the years. There was some talk out there he might go undrafted. That was just like last week. I had heard some of that. Like apparently hadn't been testing very well or whatever, interviewing mm-hmm. well. Goes fourth round. Goes to L.A. That seemed like a like a yeah, that's a good spot for him to be in. Um, did you laugh at all about the Packers drafting a whole bunch of weapons on yeah. offense? Was that <laughs> funny to, to anyone but but me? No, that yeah, good point on that. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm pulling up the list now, but yes, I definitely did think about that. Um, yeah, the tight end in the second round, Jaden Reed in the second round, yeah. another tight end in the third. Yeah, yeah. Um, good stuff. Sticking, trying to, I guess, just stick it to Aaron Rodgers one last time but yeah anyway. sure sure any final thoughts on the NFL draft uh, the the only other thing that I was kind of going to go into um it was I said it was the usual suspects as far as um teams and franchises that ended up with good drafts or at least what we perceive as good drafts mm-hmm. it was also kind of the usual suspects that were getting drafted um Georgia had 10 more go um mm-hmm. this year Alabama had 10 and by the way, Michigan had nine. Yeah. Like Ohio State only had six. I thought that was interesting. That one kind of popped out to me as a as a startling statistic. Cincinnati and TCU also had a lot of kids get drafted. Yep. Um, yeah. I 
it just kind of makes the Cinderella feel um, kind of go away. Like they were just good. Like, it, yeah, you can just kind of go ahead and say they were good at that point. So, yeah, I I, th- I thought that was interesting. Just kind of going by and seeing when you you tally it, like when the draft is over, you tally every everything up, what conferences and what teams are like, what do the, like, what does the NFL think of them? I think that's always interesting. By the way, the NFL draft is always a reminder why we talk so much about recruiting in college football. Yeah. 13 of the first round players taken were five-star recruits, 13 out of 31, which might not sound like a lot, but that is so many. <laughs> like you only get about 32 five-stars every year and over a third of them this year went in the first round, not not drafted in the first round. Um, mm. And you're, you're comparing that to, so 13 out of 32 five-stars, you're, you're comparing that to 354 stars and like a thousand three stars um that's why recruiting rankings matter and yeah something i I think i might have even sent this to you as a tweet um seven of the top 10 picks were five stars coming out of high school like seven of the like the top of the top 10 so it does they're they're not all going to hit like they're not all going to be nfl guys and i think people even tell me sometimes like you guys put way too much stock into the recruiting rankings Maybe, maybe so, but it, it does mean that when you're a five star, you have a very your your probability of 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 popping in the NFL is way higher than than the yeah. four star. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's all we said anyway. Like we're not saying it guarantees success, but it does help. Yes. <laughs> it certainly it gives you better odds um, at the for at the sure. wheel. 